Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Colony Drop, a Gundam podcast. My name is Brian, my co-pilot is Isaac, and this is a podcast where we talk about anything and everything related to the long-running meta-series Mobile Suit Gundam. Today we will finish up our discussion about the capital ships of the One Year War, focusing on the Guazine and Pegasus classes. Hope you all enjoy. The second largest ship on Xeon side was the Guazine class battleship. We know it well, Brian, because <laughs> <laughs> the Great Dagwin was a Guazine class. <laughs> Though the Great Dagwin, yes, uh, uh, to reiterate to the listeners, the Great Dagwin is b- by far the best ship name in the history of Mobile Suit Gundam. <laughs> You know what? I don't think the Great Dagwin ever fired a weapon during wartime, <laughs> right? Because the only time we see it... Yeah, 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 I don't think we ever saw it fire. <laughs> we see it twice, to my knowledge, right? In Origin, we see it actually kind of observing the battle, ready right. to fight, but not really planning on it. Mm-hmm. And then the other time we see it, it's going to a peace negotiation, <laughs> and it gets destroyed. <laughs> so, <laughs> the flagship of the whole Xeon Armada... Never really actually fired a weapon. Well, uh-huh. I guess the Delos became the flagship, but um, you know, the yeah. original flagship, I should say. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. But Guazin class are beasts. Okay, they're the largest battleships, aside from the Delos. But the Delos is a carrier. Um, they're the largest battleships in the One Year War. I don't think any ships afterwards even came close. Like even the Titans never built anything close to this size. It it's just loaded with weapons. It could probably take on fleets of Solomuses and Magellans on its own. It held a it held a lot of mobile suits. It was able to hold twenty. That's a ton at the time of the one year war. But as usual, Xeon didn't build a lot of them for whatever reason. And they ate fuel like nothing else. <laughs> if you look at if you look at a guazine, there's these like large globes on it. Those are external fuel tanks because this thing just consumes fuel just like nothing else. <laughs> Similar to the Musai, you know, again, we, we've seen a lot of different aesthetics for the, the Guazine class um, over the years. So the one in the, the original Mobile Suit Gundam, it just, I don't know, the front of the ship, it reminds me of like baggy eyes. It looks like it has eyes uh, and it's like, oh. the, like the ship hasn't slept in a long time and it makes me laugh. <laughs> yeah. It looks like a sleepy lobster. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that now. Yeah. I can't unsee it. <laughs> <laughs> It always reminded me kind of like a catfish or like, I don't know, an Asian dragon or something. Like, I always thought the front area, that's like, a you know, the mustache that the dragons have sometimes mm-hmm. and like Asian style dragons yeah. or like a catfish because like the catfish has long, um, you know, yeah. mustache kind of tentacly things. A sleepy catfish, I think, is that's <laughs> now. It does look like a catfish. That's perfect. We'll name that in our side story. One of the, <laughs> one of the questions will be called the sleepy catfish. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it has trouble with its power system. So, like, they they call it, they say it's asleep or something. <laughs> Intermittently falls asleep. Uh, it's pretty good. <laughs> but um, this was one of my favorite ships, probably because we see it in Double Eighty Three. This is Delaz's flagship. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just thought that was pretty cool. I my one complaint. Of, we'll we'll talk about that when we get to Double Eighty Three. But man, this ship should have had a better exit. <laughs> <laughs> But it's hard, yeah, hard, to, was hard to beat the double cross. Hard to beat yeah. the betrayal. Yeah, that was that was quite the betrayal. <laughs> <laughs> and ironically, I like Shima and Delaz for different reasons. <laughs> this was always a cool ship. I thought it had a great design, and I always like seeing it. Yeah, and the I believe Delaz's was called the Guadin, right? Yeah, which is I don't know. That is too close to the name of your actual ship, right? Yeah, I know. Um, and it's also confusing too because I think there's some other ships called the. The Guadin, like, oh, throughout the years, like, I'm pretty sure there's one in, uh, like, Zeta. Maybe they pronounce okay. that one differently. It's been a while since I've seen that, but maybe they say that one, like, Guadan or something, but... No, I think I know what you're talking about. Axis built their own version of a Guazine that looks very close, but also very different. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that one, I think, is is bigger, but... Yeah, that shows up in WA3 at the end. That's still, you know, the Axis Admirals flying that ship. But, um, yeah, God, Guadin, he called his the Guadin? Guadin, yeah. That's a terrible name. Imagine, like, being a captain of a battleship, and you're going to call your ship, like, the, you know, the Maddle Sheep. <laughs> well, it's like, sir. <laughs> but these ships were always pretty cool, I thought. 
while I do think the 0079 one looks like a sleepy catfish, the way they made it in Origin was way better. Yeah. They really they downplayed the fuel tanks. Like in in 0079, the fuel tanks are very prominent and they're kind of like pinkish and they just really stick out. But yeah. in, in in the Origin version, it's much it's a much better modern take, I think, and it looks pretty neat. So I, if they ever redo the you know the rest of Origin. I'm excited to see the great Degwin take flight. Oh, boy. I just read some of the names that they have for Guazines. Some of the known names. <laughs> All right. There's the great Degwin. There's the Guadin. There's the Guamo. Guarin. <laughs> Guarib. Gandoa. The Guashu. And the Ghidoro. <laughs> the Ghidoro? What is this? Godzilla? <laughs> That's Ghidorah. Yeah. <laughs> There's clearly know. a theme here, a, a gua theme. That must be a prerequisite. <laughs> you know, Deg- maybe Degwin gave special instructions that only he can have like a one that's <laughs> actually like a name. Like everybody everybody else needs to name there's something that's unintelligible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not a lot of variety with those names. But super cool shit though. Do you think the Guazine class is cooler looking than a Musai? Absolutely. I'd rather be in a Guazine. <laughs> well, of I course. Think a, yeah, I think a Guazine could probably take on multiple Magellans at once. Oh, yeah, I think so. I think I, yeah. I believe it outperforms the Magellan. Yeah, I don't know what the Federation was thinking. but Actually, I'd like to know the story of the Guazine. Like, did Xeon build this battleship from the ground up? Or was it something civilian that they kind of transformed? No, there's no way this was something civilian. It's too big. Yeah, I think it's too big, and it, it, there's nothing else that really looks like it on the Xeon side um, or the Federation side. Yeah, that's true. So, okay. If anything, if anything, I would say they based it on a Magellan, and they made and they made it look like a you know, oh. they gave it the Xeon look. Oh, so they were like, okay, we need our own battleship flagship. Yeah. You know, we need to outdo the Magellan. We're gonna out Magellan the Magellan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, this. obviously, it's much bigger than Magellan. So. Um, yeah. Moving on to Xeon's answer to the Pegasus class, or actually, I think that the Pegasus was the answer to the Zanzibar, <laughs> is the yes. Zanzibar, which is an assault carrier. That pretty much just means that it's, I don't know, kind of a dedicated, I wouldn't even say it's a dedicated mobile suit carrier. It's more, it was clearly designed for Earth's invasion because it can go to Earth and exit Earth's um, atmosphere. Yeah, but it doesn't do it very effectively, like the white base does. It needs help. <laughs> <laughs> yes, as we saw in the 8th MS team, that Zanzibar, you know, that, that tries to get back to space is pretty much a sitting duck for, for a, a sniper with a, a long beam rifle. So sad when that one went up into flames. But I think the design on this is pretty cool. Yeah, it just looks like a fast ship for some reason. Yeah, I think it's got a nice, sleek design. I do like in Gundam that you can definitely tell the difference between one of these ships that's supposed to operate on Earth and one of these ships that's supposed to operate in space. And this one definitely seems like it could, you know, obviously anything can really work in space, but this one seems a little bit more aerodynamic, so you can tell that it's meant to to kind of go back and forth. Yeah, it's kind of the only Xeon ship that has wings that look like, you know, they could plausibly help it stay afloat in the in the sky. Yeah, but at least so, it could glide down if it had to. <laughs> right. We actually don't see this too much in the original 0079. Um, for whatever reason, it shows up more in like side stories and also in um, you know 0083, where it was Shima's flagship. I always thought that was pretty cool. But I think a lot of them, or maybe the bulk of them, were used after Odessa when uh, Xeon started retreating from Earth. So that must mean... the Almost all of them were on Earth at the time, right? Because we don't see too many of them at Abawaku or Solomon. Yeah, that makes sense. I wonder if the reason that we see them mostly in side stories is that maybe that maybe this design held up pretty well over the years. So when they went back and they said, "What can we use?" Like the Zanzibar seemed like a good a good fit. Probably, or maybe it meant that all the Musais were actually in the main battles. You know. Like, if there's yeah, actually going to be true. a shooting fight, Xeon would rather send a Musai than a Zanzibar. So, yeah. That makes sense. It's got a cool name. I know. It was, it was, it was all such a cool name. Yeah. It always makes me think of Metal Gear Solid, though. <laughs> Which one? 
<laughs> Whatever game they talked about Zanzibar in Zanzibar Island. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. Zanzibar is so cool. Like I've never been there, but I don't know. It's cool how there's like such a a big island just off a continent that has like no other islands. Yeah. <laughs> okay, moving on. <laughs> so let's hop over to the Federation and talk about the Pegasus. Tell us all about Brian. All right. So the Pegasus class. So the Pegasus class is the class of ship that the White Base is, and the White Base is sort of the main, you know, capital ship on the Federation side that we follow through the original Mobile Suit Gundam uh, 0079 TV series, and this is what everyone calls the Trojan Horse. It's this white ship that has wings, and it pretty much looks like a Trojan horse. It's spot on. Um, it's got these two front sort of legs that serve as the, the mobile suit catapults. And the, the big thing with this uh, ship was, like we alluded to earlier, it was the first ship that the Federation made that was made to hold and launch mobile suits. Uh, in addition to that, it used what was called the Manofsky craft system that allowed it to sort of fly uh, at low altitudes on Earth, and escape from uh, you know Earth's atmosphere back into space without the issue, without the use of the booster rockets, which we saw in Mobile Suit Gundam: The Origin. Um, so that was a huge you know leg up on the other Federation ships in terms of uh, you know mobility and just flexibility. You didn't have to you know attach this big rocket, you know get onto like a, a launch pad, spend all this time you know boosting straight up, probably very vulnerable. So the white base could could kind of fly around and go back to space whenever it was kind of safe. And, you know, while we only really see one in the original show, past that original show, they've introduced many more Pegasus class uh, ships. And, you know, given that the white base was in the first episode of the original show, uh, it definitely has one of the sort of more 1979 designs. Like it looks very much like a Trojan horse. Um, it is not subtle at all. <laughs> um, whereas maybe over the years that Trojan horse design has stayed, but I, I think it's become a little bit more subtle. Would you Would you agree with that, Isaac? Yeah, I, I would even go so far as to say that I don't like the original design. It is way too blocky and clunky. <laughs> it, it's just it's almost kind of ugly. You know, I know I'm saying that as a Gundam fan, but it, it, they cl- definitely improved the design moving forward. They're just some beautiful designs. I think my favorites are like the Albion and the Grey Phantom. But um you know the original white base is the original white base, but man, it is a boxy design and were it not for the colors, it would look like an ugly ship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, though I think the white definitely helps it here. It it's is the hero very... colors. It's the same yeah. colors as the Gundam. That's right. Darn right. White, blue, red, and a little bit of yellow, just like the Gundam. Yeah. They've definitely, you know, smoothed out the design a little bit over the years. Uh, I will say, though, that the white base looked great at the end of Origin. So if they ever well. <laughs> finish Origin, I'm really excited to see the, the white base, you know, take off again. Because it's a very iconic design. Everyone associates the Trojan horse design with Gundam. Uh, you know, so much so that, you know, in Gundam Seed, you know, which was what we call a, an attempt at a, at a reboot of the Universal Century, you know the the archangel from that show is a modernized white base. You know, looking back, is the arch is the archangel as cool as the white base? Mm, yeah. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I like Gundam Seed. But let me say no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would much rather see that new version of the white base or the updated version of the white base they had at the end of Origin. So hopefully one day they uh, animate the rest and we get to see that take off in a in a flight of glory um, in modern animation because I think it'll do it some wonders and it'll help it'll help you know, update the iconic design uh, for the world. But so in, like I said, they've, they've introduced a lot of different Pegasus classes over the years. There was a lot more than I remember. And a lot of them, you know, there's not a whole lot of information on, but these are the main ones that I found. So you can tell me if I'm missing any. And if you, if anyone out there knows of ones I'm missing, you know, please comment and, and share a picture with us. So there are two other ones, at least two other ones that look pretty much exactly like the white base. And those are the White Base 2, a.k.a. the White Base Junior, um, which is in the manga called Shars Deleted Affair. And that looks pretty much exactly like the White Base. Very boxy. And then there's also just one that's just called the Pegasus. And that's from the Mobile Suit Variations sort of designs. And I couldn't even find a picture of that one. But given uh-huh. that it's, uh, I think it that was actually supposed to be the first ship of the line or something like that. Um, so I assume it it looks exactly like the white base. So these three, you got the white, you got the Pegasus, the white base, and the white base two. 
also known as the White Base Junior, they all look the same. Heading a little bit further into 0079, you've got the Grey Phantom, which you just mentioned, Isaac. And the Grey Phantom, I think, is maybe one of the best Pegasus class designs. Yeah. It looks pretty cool. They kind of like flattened it and really made it a lot sleeker. Um, right. And we first saw this in 0080. And, you know, if you go back and watch 0079 today, you're going to be like, wow, that white base is a really weird looking ship. But if you watch 0080 and you see the Great Phantom, you're going to say, wow, that is a cool looking ship. Uh, it's a very good updated design. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see, you know, well, I guess we already would know what it would look like in Origin. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised if in the live action movie, if they do use a white base, it looks a lot like the Great Phantom. It should. It should look like the Grey Phantom or the Albion, I thought, because yeah. those are such awesome designs. They look more like spaceships, but also at the same time kind of tough in a way, like mm-hmm. especially the, the, the Grey Phantom. You know, I know things didn't go the way they thought it would <laughs> in the battle, <laughs> but the ship still looks pretty cool. <laughs> right. So on that point, uh, we, we touched on this earlier in one of the other uh, one of the earlier podcasts, but. The Great Phantom just, it's not really destined for greatness. Um, it, 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 it went to side six, the, uh, the Libot colony, to respond to the attack from the Cyclops team on the, on the uh, Gundam NT-1, the Gundam Alex. And, you know, our, our pal Mikhail, I believe his, his name was Mikhail, uh, who piloted the, the Kempfer, he wiped out their entire mobile suit team. So the gray phantom is lucky that it got a, it got away alive from that battle given that he killed their whole defense team basically and then that colony was going to be nuked at the, at the end of 080 so that's the the first potential nuke that would have hit the gray phantom so it got out of it got out of uh, 079 and 0080 alive where did it go in 0083 Isaac it went to the naval review at Conpay Island previously known <laughs> as Solomon. <laughs> yes. And it so because it was at the Naval Review, we all know what happened at the Naval Review. Gato nuked the whole fleet and <laughs> the Grey Phantom suffered severe damage. So this is it just seems like everyone really wants to nuke the Grey Phantom um in my mind. Um although it it suffered a lot of damage, it apparently was not destroyed in that because we do see it again in Gundam Unicorn. Uh, where its wreckage is sort of being used as a base by the the Zeon remnants that attacked the the Torrington base, uh, which what a great episode of Unicorn that was. So although it didn't get destroyed during the naval review, I guess it, it it must have somehow made it to Earth at some point and sort of just crashed there. So there's probably a side story waiting to happen there. There are three other ships I could find that look exactly like the Gray Phantom, I think, because um, I couldn't really find too many pictures of them so there was one called the troy horse uh that's for mobile suit variations and it was oh, a sister ship to the gray phantom yeah <laughs> it's, it's a pretty uh, pretty lame name that's about as bad as pegasus right come up with something <laughs> like the gray phantom that's a great name um yeah troy horse that's that's like come yeah, on i don't know it's- did they name it after hearing like intel that xeon was calling one of the ships the <laughs> trojan horse yeah that sounds ter- What a terrible name. <laughs> yeah. Um, but similar to the Grey Phantom, it sort of suffered the same fate. It went to the Naval Review, suffered the nuclear attack from Gato. And although we do see what happens to the Grey Phantom later on, you know, we see it's on Earth, therefore it must have survived the Naval Review. We never see the Troy Horse again. So to me, that means it's it was either destroyed or maybe there's an opportunity to bring it back someday in another side story. It's always good to leave threads open for people to use later on, and this could be one of those things. There was yet a third one that looked like the Grey Phantom that was also destroyed at the Naval Review, and that one was called the Stallion. Uh, (laughs) That one seems very like 1980s porno name. but (laughs) So that means that Gato destroyed three Pegasus classes in one go. And in addition, we haven't talked about the Birmingham class yet. (laughs) But also at the Naval Review was the Birmingham class, which is basically like a super good version of like a, a Magellan, like the, the yeah. newest class. So Gato is like a total boss. So I don't know. I mean, he, he did more damage in one day than 
<laughs> Zeon did to Pegasus class is pretty much the entire war. So, oh my god, kudo, kudos to Gato. <laughs> Brian, after everything you just said, I feel like Gato rivals like the solar ray and being able to destroy <laughs> fleets, right? Yeah, we I need mean... to go edit. We need to go edit him back into our super weapon episode. <laughs> Yeah, like, oh, we just send a Gato. <laughs> oh, he'll he'll take care of it. Yeah. No wonder <laughs> they let him get away with, like, his non-regulation haircut. <laughs> this guy's so good. He can do anything. <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, and then the fourth yeah. one, the, there is a fourth that looks like the Grey Phantom called the Forestall. Or the Forestall? I don't know how to pronounce it. I assume it's Forestall. Yeah, Forestall. Um, and that is from um, a side story manga called Missing Link. Um, don't have too much information on that, but yeah, it looks like the Great Phantom. So, on the positive side, you know we don't have a lot of information about those Great Phantom e looking ships, but it does seem like the Great Phantom design is super popular in terms of side stories, which that's why I think when the live action movie comes around, I bet the white base is going to look a lot like the Great Phantom. Um, it seems like it's been popular with authors over the years when they want to go back to the Pegasus class. They it looks like that that design is super popular to draw on. Pretty much, yeah. You, you know it's something weird that I've always noticed? Every time we see the Pegasus class, it's never the capital ship. I can't think of any one time the Admiral was on the Pegasus class, right? The Pegasus class, it's almost like if you're in a Pegasus class, the rest of the Federation fleet, whether they're in Magellan's or Solomon's classes, they always sort of have a, I don't not not even envy, just contempt for the pegasus right <laughs> it's always like oh is that is that that new pegasus class or whatever you know right. it's like, uh. do they just view it as like oh it's a glorified transport for mobile suits they're not really part of our upper chain of command here in the fleet they're not a real warship they're just lugging around mobile suits is that sort of maybe you think the federation's opinion and their their officer corps Am I, I just imagining could... this? Have you ever seen a Federation Pegasus class as like the flagship or running the show? It never um, happens. No, I don't. I don't think we have. And I think there's probably two, you know, head cannon explanations for that. One being, like you said, there's there is contempt. I would agree. There's contempt, and I don't know if that's just because the higher up brass they don't like this new sh- these new types of ships that are hogging all the glory, you know, versus their normal ships they've had over the years. So that could be one thing. And then the second thing that's a more practical explanation would be that because they can carry mobile suits, those are the main warships. So they, they the Admiral can't be on there because this, these things need to be on the front lines. And, and maybe the Admiral's, you know, maybe it's not smart for them to be necessarily on the front lines. I don't know. That that, that would be how I would explain it. Mm, I don't know. I, I don't really buy that explanation. I figured like the most, these new advanced line of ships an animal should probably be running it. But then again, half the time, or maybe no, the majority of the time we see a Pegasus, it's always on some secret special mission, right? Like the Grey Phantom or the White Base. You know, it's it's not really part of a dedicated combat fleet, I guess, unless they shove it in there because we have to attack this asteroid base or something like that. Hey, hey, you know when they did uh, be part of the fleet? (laughs) At the Naval Review. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) There you go. Uh, so another uh, Pegasus class ship was called the Thoroughbred, and this was also during 0079. It showed up in the Encounters in Space video game for the PS2, as well as the as well as the video game called Battlefield Record UC 0081 for the PS3. This was the ship that carried uh, RX 78 units four and five. So that was, I believe, in uh, the Encounters in Space video game. And then uh, after it survived that conflict. It was, you know, refitted and uh, used again in another video game in a sort of a, a different capacity in 0081. Um, uh, so this ship doesn't. I this ship is pretty unique. Um, it, it doesn't share the design with with any other Pegasus classes that I can tell. Not my favorite Pegasus class design, but it's it's still probably an improvement over the original white base for sure. I don't know if I you've seen the name. thoroughbred or have any. <laughs> <laughs> you love the name, yeah. You know what? It's still a little too blocky for my liking, <laughs> but it's an improvement over the original white base. I can tell the designer of this one tried to accessorize yeah. the white base a little bit, give it some more you know, bits of color here and there. It's more interesting. I, I, yeah. They went with an interesting color, kind of a, I don't know what that is, aquamarine. <laughs> yeah. A seafoam white base, a seafoam yeah. pegasus. God, this whole ship class, the Federation was just 
evolving as they went along, right? Each there's mm-hmm. no two that look the same. Well, okay, there are, but my my point is there's just such diversity just in this class. Right. You don't see that with the Solomons. The Solomons are just so uniform. Yep. Uh, the next one I have on my list is the Blanc Rival. So this was probably the most unique looking Pegasus class ship. Might be one of my favorites. I can't tell if I like this or the Grey Phantom more. This showed up in Gundam The Ride, a Baku, which was a, I don't know, what would you call that? It was basically like a screen, like a screen ride, 3D yeah. screen ride. A Star early Tours 2000s. type yeah. simulator. Yeah. yeah. From the, I think it was from the early 2000s-ish. And it also, I think, is currently showing in um, the manga called The Return of Johnny Raiden. And it was uh, at the Battle of Baku, and that's why it shows up in Gundam The Ride. Have you seen this one, Isaac? This one looks bonkers. Um, no. Yeah. Check this one out. The Blanc Rival. B-L-A-N-C. And then space, new word, rival. This design is pretty neat because they take those little shield-looking things that are normally on the side of the ship, and they put them on the top, and they sort of move the wings down, and the boosters in the back are just blown out way bigger than normal. This totally reminds me of something that would be from, like, Gundam Sentinel or something. You know what this looks like? <laughs> that video game Raiden? From oh, like yeah. The this, looks like either, this looks like a boss that you fight. <laughs> I think it's pretty cool looking. I don't know. What do you think? It looks pretty awesome i'd like to fly this one wow yeah. this one looks great yeah i really like this one yeah um, so if i had to choose one for the live action movie i'm thinking either gray phantom or the blanc rival here people that's mm. that's my vote um one thing that's noteworthy about this one is in gun on the ride this is the ship that carried the, the g3 gundam ah yeah that so that's pretty neat yeah. yeah i like this design this is pretty cool god yeah. they got so experimental with their designs the next one I have, Pegasus class, is called the Spartan. Uh, this is the Pegasus class that was featured in Gundam Thunderbolt. And this design is pretty cool. I do like it a lot. It's blocky, but in a good way. And I like that they made the wings a little different. They like moved them up uh, a little higher, and they made them yellow, and they made them longer. It gives it a, a definitely a unique appearance. And the name Spartan, they do have a big Spartan logo stamped on it, which is pretty cool. Have you seen this one, Isaac? This one's pretty neat. Oh. It's definitely, it was probably too blocky for you, but it's, <laughs> they made it blocky, but they narrowed it. So it doesn't look like, uh, it doesn't look as bad blocky, I think. It's almost, yeah, it's almost taller. Right. <laughs> like, yes. it's loading, it's carrier bays are kind of taller now. Right. Yeah. It looks okay. I mean, they clearly designed it to look more um, modern. You know, it's got a lot more detail to it. But overall, I mean, you could look at it and you'd be like, yeah, that's a Pegasus. Yeah, yeah, it clearly fits in. Yeah. And then the last one I had on my list was the Albion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Albion. From 0083. And while this one was built in 0083, I included it on the Pegasus class list because, I don't know, 0083, you know, it's kind of still within that. It's not obviously in within the one-year war, but it's, like you said, a lot of the stuff used in that conflict was built yeah. around the same time, and the Albion clearly... Uh, well, it wasn't. It was built in 0083, so it's not one year war related, but it it fits right in with these other, uh, you know, Pegasus class ships. So now that you've seen these other Pegasus class ships, is the Albion still your favorite, Isaac? Mm. <laughs> or is that is that Blanc rival wow. getting to you? Um, I just you know what? Yeah, I'm, you switched me over, Brian. You converted yeah. me. I'm gonna go with the Blanc rival just because. Out of all the white bases, it's the most unique looking, and I actually think it's kind of the most aggressive looking too. Like its its wings look like it's just ready to attack, you know. It, it does look very aggressive. Yes, those wings are—they really committed to the wings on the Blanc rival. <laughs> I um, mean, for all those you know, serious maybe, wings. <laughs> yeah, maybe it performs better in the atmosphere compared to the other Pegasuses. I don't know. Um, Could be. Maybe that wing made all the difference for better maneuverability in Earth's atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's going places though with those th- with those thrusters though. <laughs> Wings oh, are not. Yeah. <laughs> they like double their engine power or something. <laughs> yeah, but I, I do think the Albion is a great design as well. Um, I would not fault anyone who thinks the Albion is the best Pegasus class for sure. Given especially given that you know LeBlanc rival was made you know after the Albion was made right. So designers you know take keys from everything that's come before. So you know what. Are you sure the Albion was built in 0083? Like it was a brand new ship on that year? 
Uh, I think I read somewhere that it was built in 0083, yeah. Oh, okay. Eh, yeah. I guess that makes sense. Everything was so new that year. But, I mean, looking at it, it could pass as something they built in the one-year war, but maybe didn't see that much action or something, you know? Yeah, I mean, given that it's a Pegasus class, it seems yeah. like it was probably at least in the planning stages, I would imagine. Um, it doesn't look you know, anywhere as near as complicated as the Blanc rival. It definitely fits in with the other ones that we looked at, particularly. I think it fits in really nicely alongside the Grey Phantom. Yeah. I mean, I guess we'll talk about Capital Ships and other series, but it's kind of interesting that this class sort of got phased out in a way, or I don't know, maybe mashed up with what the Solomus should be and what the Magellan should be, just got kind of mashed together with what the Pegasus is. You know, yeah, I mean, they, they kind of yeah they kind of evolved into, I guess, the Argama and the uh, Nail Argama, but those aren't quite as iconic to me. It, 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 yeah. I agree, it is a little weird that we don't see you know, quite as much as we go on. Who knows? Maybe there will be a new one in the future. We should mention the Birmingham class just because uh, I mentioned it, it earlier. So the, Actually, the last the the last one I'll mention is the Birmingham class, uh, which showed up in Double Eighty Three. I know it's not a one year war ship, but because of we we mentioned whatever everything that Gato nuked, <laughs> this was among them. It was the only ship of its class. I don't know. I view this as like the Federation's answer to the the Guazine. I don't know. What do you think? It was definitely going to be their new flagship. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> because of what happened I assume yep. they didn't build any more like they just threw the design in the trash bin they're like no <laughs> yeah but um, it almost seems like you said the Federation answer to the Guazine right yeah it, just, it seems like you know the, yeah. the big one of the fleet I guess um, pretty much yeah because the, the Federation there's no point in building something like the Delos right because there's just too much area to cover but you could build a big battleship that puts the Magellan to shame and that's what the the Birmingham was. It's interesting you mentioned it though, because I had no idea they only built one, at um, and had to go to the naval review <laughs> as the flagship. Yeah. Well, maybe if it didn't get nuked, maybe you know maybe they would have built more. But yeah, there was only one, and Gato blew it up, so didn't turn out yeah. to be super useful. Very unfortunate for the Federation, but kind of serves them right to be honest. The, the Birmingham did go on to be the the base for the. Two other really big ships that kind of look like this later on, you know, this is well, well past the one-year war time frame now, but right. um, more in the in the grips conflict era that the Titans built the uh, man. I don't remember how to pronounce this. The Dogos Gyar. Uh huh. Is that how they? Do you know if that's how you say it? No. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm sure someone out there knows how to pronounce it, but it's the Dogos Dogose Dogos Gyar Dogos Gyar. <laughs> I don't know. The big one from the, the titans made uh and then the federation makes another one uh that we see in unicorn the general rebel yeah those ships were monsters but i don't think the birmingham had launch catapults right uh you're right so <laughs> it could not carry mobile suits did not have yeah. a, a catapult uh which gotta be honest that seems like a dumb decision given the time frame yeah. why would you make one without uh mobile suit deck yeah, I'm sure that contributed to why they decided not to go ahead with the design of the Birmingham. I mean, mm. the war had changed so much by then. You have to carry mobile suits in a combat. So to just be so arrogant to not have any and just make a larger Magellan, just, just total arrogance. And that's not the reason uh, they got destroyed at the Naval Review, but, you know, it certainly didn't help. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, some, I don't know. At least GMs <laughs> from there, maybe they could have gotten a shot off at at at, uh, <laughs> at Gato or something. But I don't know. Right. Yeah. Or at least have some one of them sitting on the deck, you know. He, yeah. You know, but, shooting or something. But what a disaster! The name of a review. How arrogant of the Fed. We're not talking about Delay Three, but how arrogant of the Federation have a naval review when they know that like their prototype. Nuke equipped Gundam <laughs> that has been stolen by a, a group of terrorists. Yeah, it, it does seem like a very Trumpian move. Yeah, it's like, oh, we're going to go ahead with the nail review. It's like, this is a terrible idea. This is probably the one reason they stole the weapon. <laughs> yeah, you got to be if you're Zeon. On? Yeah, exactly. If you're Zeon, you're salivating when you hear that they announce a nail review. Yeah. <laughs> well, Isaac, did you have any other uh, capital ships on your list? Or do you think we do you think we covered? I most sure of them? do. Oh boy, what is it? <laughs> I have two left, and I'll combine them together. These are the Xeon resupply ships. 
<laughs> Saving the best for last, I see. Exactly. So the Federation just had one supply ship, the Columbus, and it had a ton of room, right? It did sting. That was it. Xeon had two resupply ships. They weren't designed to hold mobile suits, and they were both unarmed. The first class was called the Papua class, mm. and it held enough supplies to be able to resupply in two Musais. But Xeon phased it out by the end of the war and replaced it with a larger ship called the Pazok class. And the Pazok class can do the job of two Papua classes. So one single Pazok can resupply four Musais. So I thought that was interesting that, well, actually not interesting. It was very Xeonic that you focus so much on improving something that really shouldn't be improved on. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe it made more sense for Xeon to like resupply more ships with just one ship. But I, actually, no. No. Why are we redesigning a supply ship <laughs> during a losing war? Shouldn't we use resources and time on something else? Like, I don't know, improving the performance of Zaku's or... <laughs> You know, figuring out a way to defeat the Federation. <laughs> nope. <laughs> gotta gotta fix up those supply ships. Yeah, I, I will say I had the I had the Papua and the Pazok on my list, but I looked at them and I was like, nope, <laughs> I'm not doing those. <laughs> I don't blame you because there's so little to talk about them. I'm done. <laughs> what is they there just, to say? They're supply they don't, ships. <laughs> they don't look very great. I'll say that. Yeah, that and I mean. The Columbus is a supply ship also, yes, but to the Columbus's credit, it could be easily drafted into becoming a, <laughs> uh, a mobile suit carrier, and not even just a mobile suit carrier, a massive mobile suit carrier, because it can hold 20 mobile suits. If you're a Xeon and you're flying around and you see a Columbus, I mean, you pardon my language, but you kind of have a your pants moment, right? <laughs> you have no idea if they're transporting like medical supplies and you know canned food or... Or if it's loaded up with 20, like, ace GMs and they can fly it out at any moment to destroy <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah. If you're in a Solomus or a Magellan and, like, or even a GM, like, doing a patrol and you see, like, a Papua or a Pazok, you might not even bother destroying it, right? You kind of just <laughs> call it in and then, because there's, no def- there's no weapons on these ships. <laughs> I, would say, I would say the Papua looks better than the Pazok. The Pazok looks... I, yeah. I, I don't... Fragile. I yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's as fragile as the plants from Gundam Seed. Um, yeah. It's got like these two necks. And I mean, they connect to presumably the supply areas. Um, yeah. It, it looks like if you got like two lucky shots on this thing, it would crumble. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm sure the Papua. Its design actually kind of looks like, you know, if you didn't know. If, or if it was your first time seeing it, you could assume it was a warship or some type of carrier, but um, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> the Columbus reminds me of that ship of the of the mobile suit carrier that we saw in Gundam: The Origin that dropped those crappy oh, gun cannons. Yeah, I'm sure it was a similar design. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it probably was an early version, actually. So yes. Now, listeners, you, you've heard about Xeon's resupply ships. <laughs> Don't say we're not thorough. Yeah. We, didn't, we may not have gotten all the Pegasus-class ships, but damn it, we got <laughs> Xeon supply ships on this episode. If we talk about the Federation supply ships, we have to talk about Xeon supply ships. <laughs> fair is fair. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed our rundown of the capital ships from the One Year War. If you think we missed your favorite capital ship, please let us know in the comments. You can leave us a comment on YouTube uh, or on Twitter at Colony Dropcast. We'll be sure to listen in next time to our next episode here on Colony Drop, a Gundam podcast. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. See you next week. <laughs>